Good day, Sven the Slayer here once again, and welcome back to Star Maid. In this video, I'm going to be showing off another rail creation, logic creation. Um, the rails in it are extremely basic, but the logic behind it is um, quite complex, and I won't show that off right now. It's all below the deck. So... Here we have a little bit of a, a parking garage, and I have a rotator block there just to uh, get by a certain bug, and it, it actually adds a nice effect. And over here we have a control panel, and to store a vehicle you want to enter a pin and hit enter, and of course um, you have to have a ship stored, it won't accept a blank platform. And we can also uh, select to recover a vehicle. So let me just, uh, just put it in recovery mode. The door will close and the platform will drop. You can see it has a yellow flashing light when the uh, there's a platform moving. And once that's in place, you'll get the blue light to um, accept a combination. I could have put the combination in ahead of time, so that's just one two, three, four, and hit enter, of course, and you see that the platform is moving. And I now have recovered my ship, which is my little, uh, uh, I forget what I'm calling this, Stumpy, I think that's the name I gave that one. And of course I can re-enter the password, or the pin number, and send it off back into storage. And flashing lights. Um, another interesting thing, I, I really like the way I did this control panel. Whenever you push a button, you get a green flashing light, and then once you push four buttons, because it's a four-digit pin, uh, you get the... Why hasn't that stored yet? That's... Sh okay, okay. It's stored, but it was waiting for the new platform to show up. Um, so when you push a button, you get a green flashing light, indicating it's accept that, accepted that button, and when you hit four digits it lights up green and if you hit uh, the fifth one to break it uh, put it in a fault it'll show up yellow until you hit the reset switch and the red light is just will only flash when the system is full so now that we have an open board here we can say we want to recover a ship and of course the platform will move let's just put in my next combination ahead of time, so as soon as this turns blue, I can hit enter and it'll accept it. And it'll now is moving, bringing me up my next ship. It's right there, so it should be pretty quick. And now you see I brought up my puddle jumper. And let's just stash that back in there real quick. And it, I could put in any pin I want uh, the second time. It doesn't, as soon as you retrieve a vehicle, it wipes the, uh, the flash memory. And now I'll show you, uh, the, the docking. Well, I forgot how fast these little zip shuttles are. So as soon as it brings a platform up to me, it will open the door. And then you can dock, and it spins around, and that's important because currently you can't detect when a ship docks but I can detect after a ship rotates, so it just docks, rotates the ship, and it's, it's actually a nice little feature because then your ship is facing out. So it, it, it's really there to fix a bug, otherwise I couldn't detect um, whether a ship is docked or not and do a couple of the error checking features. Like right now, I can't send this, I cannot ship, uh, change the system into recovery mode because there's a, uh, a thing it, it's still in recovery mode. I think if I go on dock it, it'll actually um, close that door on me because it's actually in recovery mode right now, but the platform cannot be told to move because there's an object on it. But hitting the button again toggles it back. Um, so now we just need to enter a pin number and something different because that, that's the only fault in the system right now. There's no protection against 
two people putting in the same pin number if they do that it'll let them store the vehicle but as soon as the, one of them comes by and enters the pin and retrieves tries to retrieve their vehicle it will actually break the machine and has to be manually reset kind of so now we'll send this ship into storage actually let's uh let's hop into the the block here and I don't know why that build plane is on and send it off into storage so the door shuts platform starts moving and it'll go to this slot at which point the system will search for a new slot uh, open slot so you see the pulse goes down the chain until it finds an empty bay and then it calls that empty bay and then it'll just store them one two three four five six and then of course if you store one and then remove that ship that bay will be marked empty so the next person to come along will get that bay if all the others are full it's I've I tested it quite extensively before I added the a ship must be docked in order to function feature um, but here you can see my little stumpy shuttle and my puddle jumper stored and <laughs> this thing is such a wiring nightmare uh, I don't remember the numbers offhand, but each one of these uh, flash memory modules here has, uh, it, so you, um, this is one digit, and it has two inputs here, the knot has an input, and so that's three inputs per one of these, and then they all help put to here, and it's just... It took a lot of time to wire everything together. So um, behind this is just a, the normal keypad with the um, uh, I can't remember the name of the stupid thing. I just did a tutorial on it too. Uh, shift register. Uh, the only difference is this one actually encodes in binary. So down here we have the uh, the binary. It just the the keypad just in, you know manually encodes it directly into these four ores at which point then they pass their signal on to the memory here which then when you uh, hit enter it then writes that memory to whichever bay is open so I can actually uh, well, I'll have to get a ship to do that so let's just hop out real quick okay and not be rotating need the actual Dock, downward facing, forward, T, oh man, docking is such a, quite a hassle, <laughs> you can't just dump the core on there, so now we have a ship docked so we can store this one and it'll go into this slot, so we type in a password, let's just do what, uh, 8, 9, 7, 8, I don't care. And you see that the the binary is actually encoded and stored in these memory banks. And then as soon as I hit enter, it'll be written to these banks here. And this is just the essentially just the bus, just taking the connections. The connections come down to here, over to here in the same pattern, and then over to here in the same pattern. So everything lines up nice and neat. If I get far enough away, you can actually see some of that process happening. See, now it has been written to that memory, this flash memory, I guess it is. And then once that happens, it also sends the the platform into the docking bay. And recovery, which I can't do until it pulls up the next board, because safety features, I like my safety features. When that light is flashing, you, this button does nothing. So it's a nice little... Uh, if you get these boards intertangled, it's, it takes forever to fix them, especially because they're using wireless logic, and then I actually have the, all the numbers lined up to make sure they're, they're properly uh, wired in. I had some, a glitch earlier, and I actually released every board onto the, onto the rail, and that took half an hour to clean up. And that was just because of uh, slow loading times, but it's not a big deal. So send that into recovery mode. It sends the vehicle down, and once again, there's another safety trigger that says all these 
uh, activators here have to be lit up in order to uh, enter this, which is that blue light there. So then once that's blue and we type in, what was our password again? 8978 or something. Um, so now what happens is it has it stored here and then it runs it through that bus again and the bottom section is the the right and then the top these top two uh, sections and ands are actually the uh, the read state so what it's doing is it's comparing all of the on bits and all of the off bits through the knots to make sure that the ones that are on are supposed to be on and the ones that are off are supposed to be off and when all of those get a match all of the ors on top will go off which in each section will go into the ands, and then in, into the final and, which then triggers a whole bunch of stuff. Um, it's, <laughs> like I said, it's a wiring nightmare now, uh, just because, you know, once it was all thrown together, it just needed to be, you know, wired in. Everything goes up to here to some of the, the door controls and whatnot, so we'll hit enter, and you'll see that that whole top section flashed, indicating that the password was correct, and it runs that through every single one of these memory banks at once. Because it has to actually compare all ten of these, because uh, it doesn't know which one you're trying to input the password for, and then there's, there's our little uh, core with a docker on it. And, uh, yeah, um... Beyond that, I don't know what else to say about this contraption other than this took me a lot longer than I expected. Like, I developed the the read-write memory one day in a couple hours, and then the next day I built the framework of this and the rail controls and had everything manually operating, and then the third day I actually installed the first memory module. The fourth day I installed I think maybe just two at that point and then the fifth day I installed all of them and then now here's the sixth day and I finally got everything working right and then actually the, today I added the the wireless features so that I could actually detect whether a ship was there or not and you can see over here it says you know red flashing light indicates storage is full which I was going to demonstrate but I don't actually feel like filling up actually I, uh, I can do that um, storage is full this automatically put the system into vehicle recovery mode enter your pin retrieve your vehicle please check out an admin to verify no empty slots are locked so that no empty slots are locked thing was if somebody would come along put in a password and send the bay down without actually having a ship dock to it so you'd have to have like an admin come by and say, oh, that's an empty platform. So th the wireless logic fixed that. So, um, yeah, let's just... So we have that one there. And I can... This flip-flop here is actually what determines whether a bay is empty or not. So we just want to... tell the system that all these bays are em are uh, full. And I can show you the last bit. So those three are already full. So now let's uh, give it a password. 8888. Eight, eight, eight. I don't care. Enter. It'll send it down in a way. And once it reaches its destination, it'll send a signal to retrieve the next platform, which you'll be able to see go down the chain. But it'll reach the end saying that there is no available platforms, and you'll now see that that red light is on, and the ship recovery system is now activated. Actually, I think I forgot to change one setting. Because I, I tweaked the way the, the platforms were, too. They, originally, they were um, flat with the core, but I had to make them deeper to add all the circuitry. So, yeah, this <laughs> so yeah there's a f feature I forgot to fix. Um, it's not empty anymore, so that light should be turned off, which that is just uh, going up here, selecting that, and I think that goes into...
something. I don't know. I have to mess with that. But that'll be about it. I know this contraption was actually a challenge issued. I think it was like pretty much issued twice. I, I remember seeing two threads uh, about having a, a storage system where you can enter a pin to store your ship. So that's this is my, uh, you know, mission accomplished video for that. Um, it, after I, I play around with this for maybe another week, make sure it's all bugs free. Uh, maybe figure out how to wire in a uh, multiple same password detection. Like, I don't want it just to say, you know, compare it to see if the password's already entered, because then the person entering the, ne the, the same password can be like, oh, somebody already used that pin, I'm just going to enter it and recover a ship. Um, so I wanted to avoid that. I think the best way to handle it is to... Uh, actually have it lock out those bays possibly if uh, two pins are entered because right now it just it breaks the system um, and which I could demonstrate but this video has already gotten long enough and I've been rambling for a little bit because there's it's a lot to uh, take in there's a lot of logic pipes and it's a one hell of a spider nest down here but it's a fully functional multiple deck expandable um, pin activated storage system and I can make it as big uh, bigger to hold bigger ships this is just my my test platform uh, I could even do a version that doesn't use ships per uh, se separate docking platforms like you just land a ship and you enter the pin and it sends your ship along the rail you're docked to so like for a horizontal configuration perhaps could do the same thing with that. Um, I will definitely be doing a tutorial on these flash memory modules because I think they're really useful and I don't know if there's a, a better way to do uh, write, read, and reset if this can be done any smaller. Like I said, this was my first uh, venture into a, this is my first venture into binary as well as my first venture into um, memory like this, like flash, actually flash a memory, and like crazy buses and whatnot, so, uh, yeah, <laughs> I think that should about finally cover it for this video, I wanted to do this just one rambly long take, uh, thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video and it inspires you to be creative.